Hello everybody. Today is going to be a combination of a get ready with me with doing uh, just I want to talk about gratitude and about the past year and how it's changed. I meant to do a video for you on the anniversary of my surgery which was July 13th so I'm just a little bit late but I cannot believe on some levels that a whole year has gone by and on other levels it's as if how could a whole year have gone by but I'm grateful for it. I've had a whole year in which to learn new lessons, to practice new things, and to understand how fortunate I am on so many levels, whatever the future has in store. Let me start with this by showing you my Biore. I had told you this when I got it as part of um, a gift from a company that had sent me, I think it was Pinch Me, actually that sent me this uh, with a lot of other things. This is the Biore All-in-One Charcoal Cleansing Micellar Water. I love it, love it, love it. I use one of these pads. It makes me feel so incredibly clean. It just makes me feel squeaky clean. Now this is pure white. And when I start to use this, it's amazing to me. And yes, if anybody is asking, I did fall asleep last night without taking my makeup off. So I thought I would make the best of it and show you how unbelievable this stuff is. It really is incredible. I'll use the other side to do my eyes. It doesn't pull, it doesn't rub, and it just feels wonderful. Okay. Let me go back to my story. I mean, those of you who know me, those of you who have been following my path for long before this started, know that I had the misfortune of having a growth and having it misdiagnosed and then having to deal with everything that I dealt with. So I had to go through some of my worst fears and I think that's part of the learning process sometimes, just having to do that. The next step I'm going to do is my Tatcha Luminous Deep Hydration, and this is the Firming Serum, and I just shake it very, very gently, and it takes the tiniest little bit. It's interesting, when I went to Ulta to get my water drench, I don't know if I'm running out of this, or, ah, uh, there we go, okay. It takes the tiniest little bit to do everything. And it smells so good. I think it's, to me, it smells like white tea, maybe white tea and ginger. There was a Bath and Body Works soap, white tea and ginger has that kind of a scent for me. Okay. And normally I would use my eye, um, my hyaluronic eye cream, the Emma Sam, but I don't have it with me, so I'm not gonna use it today. So this is all I'll be using for this. So when I finally had gotten to the point where even though the doctor kept telling me nothing was wrong, I knew something had to be wrong because you couldn't have something that was growing at that crazy pace and have it not be anything. So. I had to go for the MRI. Again, I know this is belaboring it for many of you because many of you know the story. Okay, let me show you this, by the way. This is my old Peter Thomas Roth uh, water drench for me, and a lot of you, again, have bought it because, since I've been talking about it, and a lot of you know how wonderful it is to look how empty this thing was. I mean, literally, I had maybe two more times, if that. I finally said it's the one thing I can't get along without. I went to Ulta yesterday and I had to laugh. This is the smallest bag I've ever gotten from Ulta, but it was the only thing that I bought. And uh, I would not want to use anything but this. This is all it takes. It feels like it's melting into your skin. It is the most moisturizing thing I've ever used. And my skin, I mean, thank God, considering everything I've been through, my skin is really in good shape. 
on my face anyway. Um, so I went for my MRI. The MRI was its own nightmare for me because of my claustrophobia. And another thing that I learned along the way based upon that experience was by sharing it, it has really helped other people. And I get messages now. Every now and then I will get a message from that video of somebody who had to go through it now and how it helped them or how they, they found it so hard to do. But I think there is something about the knowledge that you're not alone when you're going through something that even as terrible as it seems, if you're not alone, it makes it easier. It really does. So I went through that. As you all know, I went through my radiation treatment, which had its own side effects. And one of the side effects of that, I'm going to use the Doll 10. And uh, this is a medium shade. And I like this a lot. It's a hydrogel foundation. Uh, aside from my Marinesse, this is my favorite foundation. And it takes very little. This is all I need to do one whole side of my face. Okay. And um, after the radiation and before the surgery, when I had to go to my cardiologist to be cleared for the surgery, he did uh, all kinds of tests on me. And the cardiogram showed that there was an irregularity. And then he did an echo and he did, um, I think he did, a carotid artery test at that point, but I don't recall for sure. So what he discovered at that point was that I had a left bundle branch block. And I said it had to be from the radiation. And everybody kept telling me, no, it was not from the radiation. You weren't being radiated around your heart. And I said, but it has to be because I have had EKGs all along the way. And I had an EKG right before the radiation started. I had been having them, never had an issue. So my cardiologist said to me, he didn't know if they would do the surgery, they might not. So, all right, once again, I'm just gonna show you this. By the way, this case, I absolutely love, love, love. It is something I bought quite a while ago. I had shown it to you back then. It's a way for me to take everything that I use let me just pull this down for a minute. Everything that I use for the day, and it's all in one place, so it makes it a whole lot easier. Um, and there's lots of space in here for all the things that I need and two side pockets. So it really works well And this top part. And you can hang it up. It's got a hanger if you're away and you want to do that. So, um, okay, let me get my... This thing, I really need to replace this too. This is hilarious. Talk about hitting pan. <laughs> There's nothing but pan in this one. It kind of looks like a guy who's got a little bit of fringe of hair around his bald head. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so the they did allow me to have the surgery, I guess. I don't know if it made a difference because he had the echo and the echo was good. And uh, I never thought too much about it. After the surgery, I had lots and lots of issues. And what I wanted to say, I don't want, again, I don't want to belabor the whole thing. I don't want to go over the whole thing again, but there were so many lessons in this and so many things for which I need to be grateful because my, um, phys my uh, surgeon, had said to me, it looks as if we're gonna to have to sacrifice the femoral nerve because of, you know, the tumor resting on it or being, or having it being entwined with it. And if that happened, I would likely have to wear a brace for the rest of my life, poo, poo, poo. And I, I said, no, that's not gonna happen. I said, it's, it's not gonna happen. And she said, you know, she looked at me kind of, as if, yeah, she knew I wasn't wanting to hear it, but that was gonna be my life. And what she had told David was that if I were younger, that I might have needed to wear a brace for several months and then maybe be able to 
not wear it and to be okay. My, they, I had two real concerns about wearing a brace. One of them was I didn't want my muscles to atrophy because my muscles were good. I had really good muscle tone. I didn't want to lose that. I didn't want to give it up. So I fought the brace from day one. They would not let me not wear it in the hospital. It made everything harder. It was torture. And the aides, when they got me back into bed, I mean, I don't know what they, they tore something in the muscle thing. I was in horrible pain and then I couldn't do anything for, I, I lost six to eight weeks with that. And uh, it, it just made things harder. But it taught me again, so many lessons along the way. Number one, if you can possibly be, you need to be your own medical advocate or have somebody who loves you enough to be that for you because otherwise you can get lost in the system. You really can. And the, the people may be well-meaning, they may be incredibly well-meaning, but there are things that fall through the cracks and it is not a good thing. So it's really, really important to be there for yourself or have somebody, as I say, be there for you. Okay, I'm going to do my, ah, I know I had it. I'm still using this. Everything is down to the dregs of everything, but I'm using whatever I have. So I wish they hadn't gone back to using that stupid applicator. I like it so much better this way, but they don't make it this way anymore. So I may wind up using something else. If anybody has a primer that they like a lot, do me a favor, put it in the comments below and let me know what you like to use. So, of course, then there was the whole thing of going into um, Glen Cove for the acute part of my care, which as I've told you many, many times was a gift. The place was wonderful. The people were wonderful. The care was wonderful. The food was incredible. It was an altogether positive experience. Then I went to Stearns. Stearns was, I wouldn't want to put anybody in serious need of care in that place. It was horrible. The physical therapy there was incredible. They're known for how good their physical therapy is. The nursing care was non-existent for the most part. And, and by that, I don't mean to demean the few incredible nurses who were there, but they were very few. And, you know, their shifts were not long enough because they had three shifts. And it was a definite problem for me. So once again, it was that same thing about having an advocate, or if you don't have an advocate, you need to be your own advocate if you're of sound mind, and it makes it difficult. I could easily have died in that place with that MRSA infection if I had not been adamant that I had to get out of there. And my roommate told me to call 911 because they were not listening to me at all. And they kept saying they were monitoring it. And I kept saying they were gonna monitor me right into my grave. So it was a very, very terrible experience. It was, and then I got home and then I had to deal with all the fears of being alone, being very fragile physically and having to do things that I didn't know whether I could do and I couldn't drive I couldn't go anywhere I was alone in the house most of the time I was supposed to get help but they didn't have any help available so I really didn't get any I did four months later I think get meals on wheels but I got no help in terms of, they were supposed to have somebody to help me to do some cleaning maybe preparation of a meal to have um, them help me when I was in the, the shower and all of that, and I had none of that. So I had to kind of make do and get by on my own. And if there's one piece of advice I can give anybody going through any kind of situation in which they've had either an illness or an injury, and it takes time to get back to being able to care for yourself in any meaningful way, you have to have patience with yourself. You have to have patience with yourself and your body. And you really need to allow yourself the time that you need to get better. It doesn't happen overnight with my case in particular. It was gonna be a long recuperation period. For some people, it's a lot shorter. And again, if you live with somebody, it's different than living alone. 
because when that door closed and I was all alone in my house, I was scared to death. I really was. And my fear was that I would just drop dead in the house and they wouldn't find me till I smelled. <laughs> so not, you know, meaning to be light uh, about it, but I really was very, very worried. So again, this is for any of you going through something now, having a loved one going through something now, it takes time under the best of circumstances. And a lot of it is going to be dependent upon how willing the patient is to do everything in their power to get better. Because a lot of it is will, a lot of it is will. And of course, everybody has a different story when it comes to their capability. So I don't mean to say that people need to do more than they're physically capable of doing, but what they are capable of doing, the more they do, the better it's gonna be for them in the future. That is absolutely true. So I pray that anybody who sees this, oh, that's nice. Now I have green under my eye. So I really pray that anybody, uh, that it might help somebody out there. So I went through a lot of tough stuff. I went through a lot of tough stuff because of what I do for a living. And because if I don't work, there's no money coming in and there's no, there's no pension. There's no anything when it comes to that stuff. So you're kind of on your own. And being on my own, I really want to, where did I put that? I want to take the green off. So that was tough. It's still tough, but I made a decision. I think decisions are probably the wrong word. Instinctively, I had some, some inner knowledge that I needed to step outside of myself and be involved with other people on some level because all the time that I was alone and I was worrying about what I was going through and I was worrying about it on a daily basis, it wasn't helping, it wasn't changing anything. It wasn't making anything better, but reality is reality. And when you're suffering something you have no control over, it's really hard. So you deal with it the best way you can. But for me, Starting to, I mean, for me, what I started to do was I had had people reaching out to me on the dating sites for a very long time. And I really, occasionally I would answer something. I never met anybody. I didn't go out. It was just, I wasn't ready for it. But I think I felt on some level that I just needed not to focus on this inner turmoil all the time I really needed to focus on life on some level. So that's what I started to do. Now I just want to show you this because this is the wrong uh, powder when they had sent me the wrong one. It's the Studio Magic BB Pore Powder from Miraness and you know I love their stuff but the one that they were supposed to send me was the white translucent powder and they did not. But since they sent this to me twice, I returned it once, I said oh the hell, you know, the heck with it. Let me try and let me see if I can use it. And I actually have used it a little bit. It's okay, it's not bad. So I'm gonna show you, I just am gonna pat it down a little bit. And I don't, I don't do it all over. I really don't want anything getting in the crevices here. So I, I tend to lean more toward the outside of this and just do it here and then I'll just pat it in a little bit. So, um, it has really helped me a lot. Uh, having gotten, you know, having made the decision or, come, well, come to a realization more than made a decision that I had to reinvent myself in terms of making a living. And that's hard to do. It's hard to do at any age. It's really hard to do when you're old. And it's really hard to do when you're old and you're not in great physical shape. So it took a lot for me to to do that. I am starting to see some small results very early in the game. Small results at this point. I'm hoping that they grow. 
And But David said something very interesting to me recently because I was saying, oh my God, you know, I keep watching all this stuff online all the time to see if anything is selling and to see if I have anything coming in. And it was getting me really depressed, so I stopped looking. And I couldn't watch it all the time. I couldn't, I'm just putting a little bit of the, uh, and this is from the old train case. This is a really cheapy old train case. Not from this Christmas, but from the Christmas, I, no, it might not have been. This could have been from this, not, was it this past Christmas? Could have been the Christmas before. Everything got muddied when it came to that whole recuperation period because I was just not 100% sure of what anything was timing-wise. It's been kind of strange for me, so just bear with me for a minute while I get this done. And, okay. Yeah, I don't 100% love it, but that's okay. I often don't as I'm halfway through the process. And then I kind of tweak it a little bit and it gets better. I put a little more color into the corner just to give it that little bit of punch because you can see the difference between the two eyes. So again, it's you have to do it based upon what is comfortable for you. But I like my eyes to have a little bit of pop. It really makes a difference. So, okay, then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna brush it in and I'm going to blend. Yeah, that's not bad, that's okay. Once I put, that's another thing, the mascara, I wish I could get my, um, the Velvet Noir, the uh, Marc Jacobs. To me, there's no other mascara like that. I adore that mascara. I am green again because I'm an idiot. I shouldn't have done the bottom until the top was finished. So I just wanted to say, and again, I'm going through major changes in my life. I'm at varying stages of it, but I've come to a place where you know, I used to have, there's a woman who used to be a friend of mine that I met through real estate many, many, many years ago when I was looking for my own house. And what she had said is at a certain point when you just don't know what to do anymore and when, when you don't know how to make things better, just kiss it up to God. And I said, that's what I had to do. I had to say that I needed to let it be and let me be led into wherever I was going, because I have to tell you, and this is a harsh reality, and it's very hard for me to say this, but it's a truth. And I need to say it, and I'm not saying it for me, because it doesn't matter for me, but I'm saying it for you. If there's any you out there who is feeling so depressed that you feel as if there is no way out of this moment's pain, and that the only solution is to not be here, the moment passes. It does. I promise you it passes. And as horrible as it feels, and as much as you think it won't pass, it does. So you have to allow yourself that time. And I get how overwhelming it can be. If you need somebody to talk to, talk to somebody. If you need somebody to reach out to, reach out to somebody. If you don't have somebody to reach out to, reach out to me. I've been there, and I know exactly what it feels like. So again, I'm gonna get off my soapbox now, but I just wanted to say that because I know how important it is. So once again, I, I'm gonna talk about gratitude. I have some really good friends. I have some, won some wonderful friends in my world right here. I have some wonderful friends all over the world that I've met through YouTube and through other things that I do on the internet. My virtual friends are every bit as good friends, as important to me as the friends that I have right here who can ring my bell. Some of them, if they can make it up the stairs. But I, I just, 
who knows when they start a channel where it's going to go and what it's going to do. I had said in my very first video, I don't know where this is going. I don't know why I'm doing it. I had no clue, but I knew I was led to do it by some force that, that made it feel like the right thing to do. And I had to laugh in the beginning because I used to say, and it was funny because Natalie the Beauty Diva was the one who really got me started because when I had, I don't know, a handful of subscribers, she used to watch me and she used to make comments and she was absolutely wonderful. And she gave me hope in the beginning when I used to think I was talking to myself by and large, and I was in the beginning. But it didn't matter because I knew that somewhere out there, there was my audience, my people, and I think the people who are in this community, a lot of them, and a lot of them visit a lot of us in the mature beauty community. And I think it's such a good group of people, caring people who really have friendships with each other and they have relationships with us. And I think it's all, it's all a gift because years ago before we had this, the people were right there or they were not. You didn't have this as an option. I mean, I have the people that I speak to on the phone, on the app Vox, Voxer, uh, which is a great app. If you don't have it, you should have it. Voxer is a way to uh, communicate by voice. It's like a voice text, or it's like a phone call where somebody's leaving a message and you can talk back and forth, but you can do it at your convenience. And it is a free app and it is a wonderful thing. So that, and of course we have our page um, on Facebook and we've got the YouTube and we've got the Night Owls group where I do the lives at night for the group of people that enjoy that. And it really, it really has made a huge difference, a huge difference. I wanna say, I don't wanna make this go on forever. I do need to finish a little bit of what I'm doing here with my makeup. And then I'm gonna to have to get going because Jackie's gonna be picking me up soon. And I don't even know what time it is. It is, oh, I have time. She said she's going to pick me up at a quarter to one. She'll never be here at a quarter to one. Watch, she will do it today. She never, ever is on time. So I'm going to put my lipstick on quickly in case I have to go fast. Except I left the color I really wanted to wear inside. So bear with me for a minute. It's funny, Linda called me this morning and we were talking for a while. And then she said, she said, I can never talk to you anymore. You have no time, you're too busy. <laughs> it's a gift being busy, it really is. So for all my friends here and virtual for keeping me busy, thank you. I really, really appreciate it. Okay. And it's funny because Linda was saying to me, uh, what are you doing today? I said, well, I'm going out to lunch. Jackie's taking me out to lunch. And tomorrow, tomorrow I actually have, I forgot what they call it. I think it might be called a passion sip. It's a group of poshers from Poshmark, from my area, that are going to meet and chat. And I think it's a wonderful thing. So uh, maybe I'll learn something. I'm bound to learn something. So that is good. Oh my God, I never did my transition color on my eyes today. Son of a gun, I totally forgot. Okay, this I have got to replace also. Turns out I absolutely love this thing. This is uh, Beauty by Pop Sugar, and I will put a link down below if I can. This one is Be Sweet, tinted lip balm. I love the smell of it, I love the feel of it, and I use it 
more than anything else. And it's really down to the bottom. Ah, it smells like cocoa. I'm so food motivated, <laughs> I really am. Okay, this is the end of the lipstick with 14 different. So it has that sun-kissed look. I will just do a little bit of the blush on the top. It's not the one I would want to use, it's pink. I really wouldn't have chosen the pink, but it'll do. I want a little color. My doctor said to me yesterday when I went to the cardiologist, he said, you've never looked so good. So that was kind of nice to hear. And uh, gratefully, he found everything good so far. I need to get my blood work back to find out about that. But aside from that, it was all good. So I am grateful for that as well. And let me just get my... This is my Strobe and Glow Old, Old from uh, Profusion, another company you know I adore. And I'm just going to take the littlest bit of this on my cheekbones and give me that look of that dewy look that I'll never have again in real life. <laughs> so it feels good. I'm, I'm down to pan on this, but this, I don't remember how much this was. Maybe this was $10 and I have this a very long time. But there are two that I use all the time and you can see which two they are at the bottom two. And I really love it and they give you the brush with it. So what could be better? All right, then I'll just put a tiny bit of this. This is the Miraness Barely Beige it's kind of like a concealer highlighter and I just use it under the brow bone to highlight and to give me a look of a little more real. I mean, I have plenty of real estate on my eyes, but it, it gives me a nice look. And that is it, folks. So I'm gonna be headed out for the day. And once again, as I say, it's all about gratitude at this point. How lucky am I on so many levels? I wanna thank all the doctors who helped put me back together again when it didn't look like it was possible. And for all the healthcare professionals who helped me to get better, to do better, to uh, do my therapy, that has made a huge difference. And that's another thing I will say to anybody, if you have surgery and you need to have physical therapy or they recommend it, do yourself a favor. It makes more difference, I think, than any single thing. So take good care of yourself. I'm gonna be back. I've got a load of things to uh, get uploaded. I, I have three videos that I haven't had the time to um, put together, but I wanna do that for you. And I will see you soon. So thanks so much for coming along for the ride, not only today, but for as long as I've been here. I mean, I'm on YouTube now. I think it's about two and a half years. So take care, everybody. You know I love you, and I'll see you very soon. And I keep forgetting that I have my nifty little thing. If it works, I'm going to find out if it works. Ha ha.